and welcome to the session. This is Professor Farhad, and this session we're going to be looking at treasury treasury stock. This topic is covered in a financial accounting course and covered on the CPA exam, the FAR section. As always, I would like to remind you, my viewers, to connect with me on a professional level. So if you have a LinkedIn account, please connect with me on LinkedIn. If you're a Facebook user, like my Facebook page, you want to make sure you subscribe to my YouTube. Like my YouTube, share my YouTube put them in playlists, let the world know about them. And I do also have an Instagram account on my website. You can always get in touch with me. So today's lesson is about accounting for treasury stock. So what is the big idea? What is treasury stock? It's very important to understand the big idea. Well, in prior session, we were doing the following. We were looking at a company and the company were issuing stocks to investors and investors were given money back to the company. Now, guess what? We are going to reverse this process. What's going to happen now? We are going to take some money, cash, buy back the stock from the investor, and the investor will give us back the stock. So basically, that's the idea of treasury stock. And we're going to call it now treasury stock. When we issued the stock, we call it common stock. When we buy back, we're going to call it treasury stock. So what is treasury stock? Treasury stock is a corporation's own stock that ha it has been reacquired from the shareholders, but not retired. Reacquired means purchased back. Reacquired means purchased back. Okay, not retired means it's still, we could still issue it. We are not going to cancel it. Okay. Why would, why would the company do so? Why would the company buy back its own stock? There are many reasons. We're going to go over the reasons real quick. Uh, just FYI, the first reason is to reissue the shares to officers and employees under the bonus and stock compensation plan. What does that mean? It means sometimes the company wants to reward their employee. They want to give them bonus. So rather than giving them cash bonus, rather than pay them cash, what they would do is they will give them stocks in instead so to reward the employees another reason is to enhance the stock market value of the stock what does that mean it means when the company buy back buy back shares they create demand for the stock the demand brings the price up so to enhance the stock price to also have additional shares available in the acquisition of other companies. So when one company, let's assume company A and company B, when company A wants to buy company B, what they would do, rather than pay them cash, what they will do is they give them stocks and company B will give up their stocks. Okay, so the company A will buy company B. Another reason why you would, buy, you would do a buyback is to increase earnings per share. Now, what is earnings per share? Well, earnings per share is how much each share gets in terms of the earnings. So let's assume the company, we're going to call earnings net income. So let's assume the company earned $1 million. And let's assume for the sake of simplicity, we have, this is the dollar, we have 1 million shares. Outstanding. This is 1 million shares. So if we distribute the $1 million to the 1 million share, each shareholder gets a dollar. Now, rather than having 1 million shares, let's assume we reduced our shares from million to 800,000. As a result, earnings per share will go up. So to increase earnings per share, we'll also buy back our own stock. So now the idea of treasury stock, where does it fit into, into the overall picture? Now we looked in the prior session, we talked about this picture, the two primary sources of equity, which is one, paid in capital, to retained earning. Now we're going to be adding a third component of equity. And that third component is treasury stock. But notice, treasury stock is a less. It's a negative number. Treasury stock is a contra equity. It reduces equity. It's a negative figure. That's why it's called less treasury stock. So now let's take a look at this, uh, uh, let's take a look at how we do accounting for treasury stock. Well, the company uses a method called the cost method. Now, there's another method, but generally speaking, we, we use the cost method. When we use the cost method, when we buy back the stock, we are going to debit treasury stock for the price paid to reacquire the stock. So we're going to debit. So we're going to debit treasury stock. And obviously, we are going to credit cash because we're going to be paying cash. So we're going to debit treasury stock credit cash. Treasury stock is a contra equity account. It reduces stockholders equity. I already showed you this. 
Now, bear in mind, treasury stock don't have voting rights and don't they don't get paid dividend. Obviously, the company don't pay itself. Okay, let's take a look at the stockholders equity section. We have common stock of half a million. This is what the investors invested in the company. It's a five dollar power value. They have four hundred shares, four hundred thousand shares authorized, of which one hundred is issued and outstanding. Retained earning is two hundred thousand. So total equity is seven hundred thousand. Let's assume on February first, Meat Company acquires four thousand shares at eight dollar per share. Now they went out there and they purchased. 4,000 of those 100,000 shares. We will debit treasury stock. They bought each share at $8. $8 is the cost. So you want to make a note of this cost. 32,000. They will credit cash $32,000. This is what the balance sheet would look like after we acquire the treasury stock. After we reacquire the treasury stock, we only have 96,000 shares outstanding. Retained earning did not change. And now we have 32,000 of treasury stock, which is a negative less. So notice 700,000 minus 32,000 equal to 668. So notice the number of shares has been reduced. Now, disposal of treasury stock. What's gonna happen is we are gonna dispose, we can dispose, we can resell the treasury stock. We bought it, then we can, we're gonna go back and resell it. Sometime we're gonna sell it above cost, which is cost happens to be for us, for our example, $8, or below cost, which is below $8. Both increase the total assets and the total equity. So when we sell treasury stock, it's gonna increase asset because we're gonna increase cash, and it's gonna increase equity because we're issuing the stocks. Now, very important to note that treasury transactions are classified as capital stock transaction. As in the case when stock is issued, the income statement is not involved. Simply put, we don't involve in the income statement, which is what do we mean by we don't involve the income statement? We don't book a gain. We don't book a loss. So we don't involve the income statement when we reissue treasury stocks. Treasury stock is a capital stock transaction. It only affects the equity section of the balance sheet. Let's take a look at what we mean by this. On July 1st, Meade sells for $10 per share, 1,000 shares of its treasury stock previously acquired at $8. Remember, we bought 4,000 shares at eight. Now we sold 1,000 of those shares at 10. So we debit cash, $10,000. Now we sold the shares, we're gonna credit treasury stock. Now, copy this, this is a formula, you need to know it. How much do we credit treasury stocks? We credit treasury stocks number of shares times cost. Cost is eight, number of shares I'm selling is a thousand. I credit treasury stock a thousand. Now I bought them at eight, sold them at 10, I have 2000 of profit. Well, I cannot call this a profit. I cannot call this a gain. I'm going to put it in quote again because it cannot go on the income statement. So what I would do is I will credit an equity account, which is a paid in capital from treasury stock. Okay, A corporation does not realize a gain or suffer a loss from transaction with its own stockholders. We cannot book a gain. We cannot book a loss if we sell and buy our own stock. <clears throat> on October 1st, the company sells an additional 800 shares at seven. Now they sold an additional 800 shares at seven. What I want you to do, by the way, I want you to create a T account, call it paid in capital treasury stock and put in there $2,000. So simply put, create an account for this number and put in there $2,000. So we sold now 800 shares at $7. What does it mean we sold it at $7? It means this $7 is below cost. The cost is eight. We sold it below cost. So let's book the entry. We're going to debit cash. We're going to credit treasury stock for 6,400, which is 800 times eight. And the difference is a loss. Where do we book the loss? We are going to debit paid in capital treasury stock. Why are we going to debit paid in capital treasury stock? Listen to me carefully. The only reason we debited paid in capital, because we do have paid in capital. Remember, we have 2000 prior balance. Because we do have a 2000 prior balance, what's going to happen, we are going to reduce the balance by 800, reduced it down to 1200. So what happened if we don't have paid in capital treasury stock? Well, if you don't have paid in capital treasury stock, once this is gone, you're going to have to debit for any losses retained earnings. But for now, we do have 
we do have we do have paid in capital treasury stocks and we do still have notice we still have 1200 we still have 1200 as of october 1st okay and notice treasury stock was 32 we reduced it by 8 we reduced it by 64000 we still have 17600 now on december 1st assume that the company sold the remaining 2200 shares of uh, of treasury stock at seven dollars we debit cash fifteen thousand four hundred we credit treasury stock seventeen thousand six hundred now we have losses equal to losses in quote of two thousand two hundred well if i have losses of two thousand two hundred my paid in capital can absorb one thousand one hundred well what i would do then i'm gonna debit paid in capital treasury stock right here one thousand two hundred I still have 1,000. Since I don't, I no longer have paid in capital. It's, it went down to zero. I debit retained earning for a thousand. I debit retained earning for a thousand. Notice, paid in capital treasury stock is limited to the balance on hand. So once it goes down to zero, you can no longer, uh, you can no longer reduce it below zero. So once paid in capital treasury stock is down to 1,200, then you can no longer reduce it below that amount. Let's take a look at this example. Santa Anita purchased 3,000 shares of its $550 par value common stock for $180,000 cash on July 1st. Well, they bought treasury stock. They paid $180,000. We debit treasury stock. We credit cash $180,000. Now, you want to know your cost. Well, your cost is $180,000 divided by 3,000 shares. Your cost is $60. Okay? It will hold the share it will hold the shares in treasury until resold on november 1st the corporation sells 1000 shares for 70 dollars per share now they resell them for 70 dollars we debit cash 70 thousand dollar we credit treasury stock 60 thousand dollar which is the cost and now we have a gain of one thousand ten thousand dollar which is again we credit paid in capital in excess of par and, and, and paid in capital from treasury stock Let's assume instead of selling the stocks at 70, we sold it at 50, then we debit cash 50,000, we credit treasury stock 60,000, and what we do, we would have debited retained earnings, because we did not have paid in capital of 10,000. Okay. If you have any questions, any comments about this recording, uh, please email me. If you're studying for your CPA exam, study hard. If you're studying for your final, study hard. And if you happen to visit my website for additional lectures, please consider donating. Good luck.